the first of the public hearings is for 599 Route 169 for handicap ramp, rain garden sign, driveway, and parking expansion. And who is going to um, present that application? Madam Chairman, uh, if we may take the floor. Um, my name is John Guskowski. I am a planner with CHA Companies based in Stores, Connecticut, uh, formerly CME Associates based in Woodstock, Connecticut. Um, I am here with my colleague, Pete Parent, who is a professional engineer. Uh, together, we are representing um, Jamie and Jason Beausoleil, the owners of the Rusty Relic uh, with the current location in South Woodstock. Um, who are in the process of um, acquiring the property at 599 uh, Route 169, which is on the corner of Childs Hill Road. It's currently owned by Woodstock Academy and has most recently been um, used as student housing um, because of the acquisition of the former Hyde School. Woodstock Academy no longer needs this property for student housing and it's been on the market. Um, the Beausoleils uh, have two current uh, locations of the Rusty Relic, which is an antiques and, uh, and primitives shop. Um, one in South Woodstock, which is in the, the Cranton shops um, near the fairgrounds. They also have a location in Coventry, Connecticut, um, and have been looking for an opportunity to consolidate their operations and open a single retail um, shop. Uh, in a suitable setting, uh, and they, they uh, are looking at this property on Woodstock Hill um, as being able to suit their needs. Um, so in addition to opening their shop here um, and using the, the large barn, the red barn uh, on the property as um, storage and a sort of overflow uh, display space, um, they will also retain uh, a residence um, as an accessory apartment on the upper levels of the main house at 599. Um, they intend to make uh, very, very few changes to the building itself. Um, more changes are going to be made to the grounds. Uh, it's quite overgrown right now, so there's going to be a lot of trimming back and basically um, formalizing the parking lot. Right now, it's a, it's a very poorly, poor condition um, dirt driveway. Um, so we'll need to uh, establish a, a more formal parking lot um, that'll be mostly gravel, a couple of asphalt parking for handicap requirements, and then we'll be looking to add um, a handicap ramp along the um, west, I'm sorry, the east side of the building, wrapping around to the porch. Um, I believe it's the east side of the building, the Child Hill Road side of the building. Oh no, so I guess it's south. Um, and uh, uh, wrapping around to the existing front porch, which will be the main entrance. Um, and uh, I could, I will, if, we, if we can share a screen, I don't know who's who, as the charge, we can show you the site plan and my uh, colleague Pete can walk you through um, the, the physical changes that we're proposing for the site. And then we have a rendering of the proposed addition to the building, the, the walkway. Um, um, let me see if I believe I have, I should have the documents. Can? Yeah, you can, you should be able to go ahead and share. Okay, let's see. Uh, Pete, are you turned on on your, your microphone? Yes. All right. I'll go to the, do, should I go to the site plan? The, uh, yeah, that'd be the best plan. And I'll zoom in. Can everyone see the site plan? All right. Let's, uh, let's see. Take, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so, so as John mentioned, uh, the main, uh, modification to the site itself will be the addition of the gravel parking area. Uh, currently there's a, a gravel drive there that is in very poor condition. Uh, we'll be formalizing that area to create uh, parking for about 20 vehicles and then some overflow parking uh, further to the west. Uh, that will be grass surface but will be able to be parked on. And then the, the two accessible spaces uh, required by a building code. Uh, the parking lot will have a gravel access drop, uh, gravel access walkway that will connect to the access way from the handicapped spots. Uh, that surface is yet to be determined, but it needs to be either asphalt or concrete or some other hard surface that won't uh, get muddy and you know 
move under the weight of a wheelchair. Um, and that leads you to the location of uh, the proposed ramp that along the east side of the building up to the main gate, uh, main front door there. Um, in order to uh, treat the stormwater from the new gravel area and the impervious areas from the walkways, we've uh, posing a couple of rain gardens uh, within the site here, kind of trying to wrap them around the existing trees so as not to disturb as much of the existing vegetation as we can uh, from a mature tree standpoint. And then the, the existing drive out to 169 uh, will remain open for entrance only for the residential use, but will be closed to commercial use based on uh, input from our traffic engineer. Um, that's pretty much the, the bulk of the site modifications. Um, everything else will be interior to the building. Um, you also have a sign on your application? Yes. Uh, so the um the sign is an existing sign and i'll bring it up on the screen uh can people see that all right yes so this is the sign if you've driven into south woodstock um this is the sign that's currently visible from route 169 at the uh, the, the former scranton shops um it's you know wood uh non-illuminated um this would be the the primary sign for the rusty relic um on at, at and it would be I, I have the site plan back up again it would it would go somewhere in the in the setbacks or you know behind the behind the setbacks towards the corner of 169 and Childs Hill Road it would go if you can see my mouse it would be in this area a little bit but it's it's a sign that's already on route 169 uh, and if you if we will as long as we were, were showing pictures um, I have, uh, this is a picture of that sort of southerly, um, easterly corner of the house. As you see it's with the rhododendrons and it's quite overgrown, um, but you can see the, 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 the porch here on the left side of the screen. Um, this will be the approach uh, that will be wrapping around that side of the building. The parking is, will be behind the, the rhododendron there and coming up this way. Uh, and then the, the proposed porch, and I apologize for the color, um, but this is basically a rendering of what the porch would look like. We'd make it the, um, we'd elevate it with, you know, brick or concrete and um, basically match the existing railing with, with wood. So this appears gray, but it would be white. Um, and obviously these would be uh, ADA accessible and, and built to building code but that's the only exterior modifications we'd be proposing to make. And that's really it. It's a relatively small change um, other, than, other than obviously the change of use from residential primary to um, a, a commercial facility. But the Beausoleil's, you know, love the, love the house. They love the, the location and the appearance of the yard and the grounds and, and want to, want to um, benefit from that existing character rather than to try to modify it. Um, and that concludes our presentation, Madam Chair. We're happy to answer any questions. And if you'd like, I can stop sharing my screen or, or unless you want no. to keep it up. And Why don't you leave, leave the screen up to allow us to um, use, make use of your, um, your images um, during the questioning period. Very well. Um, the commissioners, um, then this is the opportunity to request information of the applicant and just un raise your hand if you're able to. I have a question, Harold Bishop calling. Uh, it doesn't appear in the photograph that you have any access to this ramp from anything uh i'm sure you have to have some gravel or cement walkway into that uh rampway so if you can answer that question i would appreciate it so pete do you want to answer that go ahead sure uh so from the the accessible parking spaces 
at the uh, the south end of the building here, there will be either a, a bituminous or concrete or some other hard surface walkway that runs southerly and then turns into the building and meets the bottom of the ramp. Do you have any, uh, see, do you have an image of that location? Let's see. Um, of the location of? From the parking where the, um, the accessibility parking will be located and then where you're proposing to okay. put the, uh, the so, walkway. So this gives you that, that pathway um so it would, it would approach from if you can see way back here if you can see my mouse there's a red car mm -hmm. in the background that's basically the parking area and it would come up the lawn this way um past the existing stone uh steps and then turn towards the house to meet the ramp so this is this is the pathway from the parking to the ramp and this is the chair. Um, will this these this existing porch and steps remain? I believe that's the plan, right, Pete? Yes. yes, I don't think there's any plan to remove those. So right here, you can see on the site plan, you can see uh, the call out where you can see the steps to the existing porch and the, the proposed walkway goes right past the end of it. And uh, this is the chair again. You should note that the none of the walkways are part of this application. So they will not be considered at, for approval tonight. I okay. Uh, is that is a walkway part of your of your charge other than par parking? Yes, absolutely. Would it be considered part of the handicap ramp because that no. is the handicap accessible pathway from the that's, parking? That's a, the, that's separate. The ramp is the ramp that you're constructing right against uh, that. The ramp is the ramp specifically, and mm -hmm. those others. None of the none of the walkways are part of your application, so and therefore they won't be considered tonight. They were all part of the site plan that was submitted with the application. Right? Doesn't matter. You what when in my conversation with Mr. Guskowski, I specifically needed to have defined um, so that we could site post the legal notice exactly what should be um, considered for this um, for this public hearing and the items that he confirmed were handicap ramp rain garden sign driveway and parking expansion only so they'll have to come if the project goes forward they'll have to come before us for uh, another public hearing and in uh, next in august Now, commission members, um, we're continuing to have, this is the opportunity for you to continue to ask questions of the applicant. Uh, Stan Swanson here, I have a question. Yes, Stan. Did you say the base of the handicap ramp was concrete? What's, what's the construction of the, of the, of the ramp? It will either be concrete or asphalt. We have not uh, done that final determination with the owners, but it'll be handicapped. Ramp itself? Pete? No, typically, the, typically the ramp itself would either be a concrete construction or it could actually be constructed of wood, uh, but I believe the lean right now is for it to be a concrete structure. And is there no access behind the house where that could, ramp could go? Uh, not into the the proposed retail space, no. Alright. Additional questions? The parking area that you have described in your um, layout here seems to be excessive uh, for a a house house on the hill in the historic district that seems to be more of a commercial nature than it is a residential area. 
Um, so I'm going to ask the question then. You have 21 defined spaces plus two accessibility parking spaces. And am I correct in understanding that you've got an estimated 11 additional grass overflow spaces? That's correct. Um, could you give me the, give, provide us with the full dimensions of the proposed parking area? So the, the bulk of the gravel parking area that main rectangle is 90 by 60. The accessible spaces are 35 by 20. And the grass spaces are roughly, because they're on a curve here, 80 by 60. And the, um, the site plan shows a significant number of trees in that, in the area that you're proposing for the parking area. Um, what is your plan for the trees? So we're proposing for that, that one tree that's called out as being to be removed and exposed to be cut. Mm -hmm. uh, that tree that we've kind of created an island around is to be preserved. And the same thing with the tree that's on the curve at the entrance on Chowzell Road. How many trees are you taking down in this plan? We're proposing to take that one tree. And this is the chair again. Could you uh, refresh our memory as to what the composition of the proposed hard surface parking area is? So the, the accessible spaces will be asphalt. The remainder of the parking will be gravel. Uh, so a crushed stone surface. And, uh, and Tim, I saw you had your hand raised. Tim Monahan, are you there? You yes, too. can you hear me? Yes, thank you. He said this was an, uh, an increase in the parking that's already there. How much parking is already there uh, is my first question. Two, was there an analysis done how much parking is needed for a business such as this? It does seem like a lot of parking for the type of business it is. And three, we've been talking about trees. I don't recall that that falls under the purview of this commission. Is that correct? Um, to answer that, that um, if there is a significant change to the landscape, then we, it, we can consider it. So, which was why I had that question. Okay. So if you could, um, if one of the uh, representatives of the applicant could answer how much parking is currently there or switch back to the, the, your original, go up one to the original map of the site, that'll show us where existing parking is. So yeah, there's an existing gravel driveway here. Uh, and, and John, you may be able to bring up some of the pictures that I took. Uh, there's an existing gravel area to the north of the, the barn here that would be eliminated as part of this plan that is currently uh, used for a dumpster. Um, and there's a, some additional gravel area that's not delineated on the, the base map, but is currently there. 
Um, and the, the total number of parking spaces depicted is based on uh, our conference with the owner about what they deemed necessary for their business based on the two existing businesses they have. Uh, that's how we determine the number of parking spaces that we would provide. If I look at it correctly, the, the driveway on the right is to the church and the driveway straight ahead is to the barn. Is that yes, correct? That's correct. So you're impinging on the uh, sight line of the church's uh, area by putting in a parking lot? We, we are installing a parking lot on our property adjacent to the church's property, yes. Commission members, do you have additional questions? Um, Stan, yes, I, Stan. I kind of just answered my question because on the drawing, it doesn't show the church's driveway, but it seems like there'd be an awful lot of driveway parking adjacent to each other, kind of multiplying the effect. Um, I noticed that the church is drawn in on there, but they didn't put the road on there. So it uh, doesn't make it seem like there'll be as much pavement or whatever you want to call it. I guess that's more of a statement than a question, but. Um, so this is Are the those chair. two trees in the picture? Uh, on the church property or on the academy property? Those, those existing trees are on the church's property. So and this is the chair using that photograph that you've got right there that you just had up. Could you show us where the parking area, if, if there will be parking in this area, where it begins, where its edge boundaries are? Essentially the edge of the existing gravel drive there will be the edge of the parking. So and then the parking will extend to towards the building from there. And so this is John Guskowski. If you can picture, just keep the, the location of these two trees in your, in your mind for a second. We'll switch over to the site plan. These are um, these trees right here uh, that you'll see. This this heavy black line right here is the is the property line. So the the base of the trunks of the trees is just onto the church's property. Uh, they hang over a little bit onto uh, the academies or the rusty relics land in terms of shade. Um, and the the edge of the gravel park and again, it's 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 going to be gravel. It's not um, it's not concrete but we'll go, you know, basically to the edge of the tree's drip line over here. And I'll bring that photo back up again, which is more or less where the, where the, the edge of the gravel drive is right now. The dirt drive. Stan has a question. Yes, Stan. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Never know if I got the right thing clicked. Uh, so in excavating for the base of the driveway, our parking area, it's well within the drip line of the trees and potentially could damage some of the root structure. There that might jeopardize the tree. And this is the chair. Do you have a plan for protection of all the existing trees on the property while you're doing the excavation for the driveway? If Pete was having a problem with the audio. Pete, can you address that? Yeah, so I mean, you know, typical construction practice would be, you know, to, to avoid damage to the major roots of those, those trees. Um, and certainly we could provide an additional call out on the plan 
uh, for something specific, um, but you know, certainly we're as far or further away from those existing trees as the existing gravel driveway. So at some point, that area has been excavated before. Um, so I, I don't think we would be having a major impact on those trees. This is the chair. I have, a, I have a couple of questions concerning dimensions. First of all, could you provide the dimensions for the sign? Um, I did not measure it. We could, we, I'll, uh, I can, I can approximate, but I did not measure it. it. It's about, it's about two and a half by two and a half. And could you, could you explain to us how it will be um, installed? Is what you're going, what you're going to use as a hanging system? Yeah, I think uh, we haven't we haven't discussed that with the owners of the property. Um, they have expressed being very open to uh, suggestions like that. So I think they would they would be happy to receive some guidance from the Historic District Commission if if you know they were to uh, have a single post and and suspend it somewhat like you see here. Um, I don't think that would would be hanging quite as high, or they could mount it as a like as a frame on two posts. I think they would be happy to do either way uh, if the commission had a preference. Um, I the application did not include anything on lighting, so if any lighting is to be added, that will have to be something that comes before the commission at a later date for approval. No, no additional lighting is proposed. All right. Um, could you provide the dimensions of the ramp, please? Uh, Pete, can you do that calc? Yes. Um, So the total length of the ramp from the northern end to the southern end is 38 feet. And the ramp itself will be about six feet wide outside to outside in order to provide a five foot clear travel path uh, per ADA requirements. And then height? from the height at the highest point? Uh, from the surface of the ramp to existing grade will be approximately three feet at the highest point. And then, and then the addition, the, the height of the railing, which I believe is about four feet. And the railing approximately? Yeah, about four feet. Four feet? 40, a bit, you know, to, for, for building code. And then you said the railing itself is going to be wood construction? That's correct, wood or, or you know, um, concrete composite, uh, like wood. Makes a difference The applicant, for the application, we need to know exactly what you're we, going to use. Okay, well we can, we can again, in this case, we're happy to go with the, uh, the, the commission's preference. All right. Um, and then you said the spindles will match existing spindles on the porch? That is correct, uh, and we can. I have an, I have another photo of the porch from a different angle. If you want to see um, what the inside of the porch looked like, or actually, perhaps it may have been in your set, Pete. Yeah, you, well, you can see the, the something of the spindles in here, but that would be the, the, the desire would be to uh, to match that. Um, and the next question has to do with um, the plans seem to indicate that some things were going to be removed. Those are not part of your application. So um, a well house and um, at least another uh, concrete, I think a wellhead, um, you need to be aware that that um, you'll need permission for those as well. Very well.
Commission members, do you have any additional questions? Not a question, but a comment on the parking. I think it's excessive for the use of this property as it is in a historic district. Duly noted. Um, I, I, this is the chair again. I um, took, had a look at your special permit um, application for the Planning and Zoning Commission, and I noted that on page, um, let's see, noted page two of the development review checklist um, under cultural resources, um, you only checked that it was within a historic district and it was a historic structure. Um, you should know that this structure um, and feature are on the National Register of Historic Districts because that's particularly Hill is a National Register Historic District. Um, it is also within the State Register of Historic Places. It's also within an area of high archaeological sensitivity or potential other archaeological significance um, and considered a historic or cultural resource. So those um, I, those items should be taken into consideration in as we review this application and also as as you um, develop work on your plans. Commission members, do you have any additional questions at this time? Not for me. I do not. That's a stand. I, I have no more questions. I think at this point we'll I think we'll reserve the right to come back with additional questions before closing the public Jill, hearing. I have a question. Yes, Tim. Um, can you explain how the barn is incorporated into this plan? Will there be any changes to the barn? And am I right to see on that plan that there's a huge concrete apron that will be constructed? And what is that for? Right. So as, as I suggested, as I noted, um, the, the int intent at this point is to use the barn for storage um, and possibly some overflow display space if, if it's needed, uh, but primarily for storage. And the, the concrete apron is, is basically to allow them to get things in and out without uh, breaking up the ground or tracking mud all over the place. But that is a, that is a concrete um, pad in, in front of the barn. That would be new. All right, so that, that will, this is the chair again, that will also have to come before the commission on a separate application. Very well. And um, it's my understanding that there, a dumpster will be located there and a, an enclosure for the dumpster constructed. Right, we can include that. I, it, it's not clear that that's visible from the public way, but we can certainly include it. That's, that will have to come at a future application. <laughs> at this point, um, I think I, I will open it up for any supporting comments from anyone who is participating in this, this meeting. Gail, this is uh, Patrick Mulet at 42 Child Hill Road. Yes, Pat. Uh, I'd just like to say is um, I like to see that not many um, of the trees are taken out as uh, what was my understanding before. Um, I don't like the idea of the, the property being what it is and this area being what it is. I don't like the, to see the giant concrete pad, although I understand its purpose that's going to be put in, in front of the barn. Um, the biggest issue that, that I'd say I would see as one of the property owners that's closest to this property. And is, can I just ask you to hold on for just a second with comments you have in opposition? Yeah, not a problem. Well, I, I, I have an, uh, a quick question. Um, so where the well house is, those outlined parking spaces above it and below it, are those the grass parking? 
That's correct. All right. Uh, yes, Gail, I can hold off on that. Okay, thank you. I just wanna, if there are any other um, comments in support of the application, then they, they can be stated now. All right, then we'll call for um, comments in opposition to the application and prior to do it to um, having the members of the public comment, I do wanna admit onto the record a number of letters that I received um, and that have been, were, have been entered um, as part of this application. These are uh, a letter in opposition from um, Jennifer Watson and David Stone, 31 Child Hill Road. A letter in opposition from uh, Dan and Mary Atwood, 493 Route 169. Uh, a letter in opposition from Alexandra Lyman, Route 169. Um, a letter in opposition from Rebecca Harvey. Route one five, let's see, Route one sixty nine. Um, the letter of letter from Pat Muley, Route one sixty nine. Um, a phone conversation from Marilyn Pomeroy, Route one sixty nine. A letter from Jock and Jean McClellan, Route one five eighty two, Route one sixty nine. And a letter from David Gould, forty five forty seven. Academy Road, and I'm going to correct and say that a letter from Patrick Muley was the address on that is Child Hill Road. And those letters have been, those comments have been distributed to all the commission members with instructions to have read them. Um, and at this time, then I open it up to uh, comment and I will say that anyone who has written a letter is welcome to also who has written a letter and that I mentioned they're also welcome to bring up any of the points within their letter or um, add any additional comments. Don't feel that you have that was that was your chance to comment. So I welcome we welcome all all comments regarding this um, application. Just use the raise your hand. Um, hopefully, I don't know. And see, Anthony, are you the only one who can see the raise the hand? Yep, I can see it. So I'll unmute it as we go. Okay. I have one right here from David Stone. Hi, uh, thank you. Um, I'm David Stone. Uh, I own the property uh, with my wife at uh, 31 Child Hill Road, as uh, noted. Uh, we are neighbors across the street from Pat and his family. Um, we are strongly opposed to the proposal. Uh, we, said, we stated the reasons in our letter, so I won't repeat them here other than just to say we feel it's entirely out of character um, with the fabric and nature of this uh, historic district. Um, and I also feel strongly that this is a case where somebody who currently does not control the property is attempting to change its use completely. And to me, that's very different a situation where perhaps a homeowner has, you know, wants to modify their house to make it more suitable to their family, or even somebody who has a long-standing business wants to make a minor change uh, to, to make it work better. Those very different situations to me. Um, but what I would like to do is just ask a couple of factual questions of the applicant, if I could. Yes, that's um, fine. Great. So my first question is, what customer count do you anticipate? There's been talk about how much parking there seems to be and that is excessive and that certainly struck us. But I'm curious, what's the customer count expected to be, say, on a weekend per day? We do not have um, exact numbers from the, from the ownership. Again, uh, Jamie and Jason Bosley are not uh, att attending this, this meeting. Um, they they you know believe that the site uh, can adequately accommodate the, the the customers that they anticipate um, is all I can tell you. Adequately constructed given the amount you know with the parking you're seeking. Um, so my next question is whether there's going to be outdoor displays of merchandise. You've described the barn as primarily for storage. Um, 
and do I understand that the lower portion of the house will be used for sales? Uh, but is there going to be stuff outside also? How, what, what's the situation with that? Uh, again, we don't have we don't have uh, complete sort of business operations plans from from the Beausoleils. Uh, the the um, main level, as to your question, of the primary building is going to be the major uh, sales space. Um, no, nothing, nothing uh, permanent. You know, no additional structures are proposed. So anything that is placed outside, um, you know, is done so temporarily and we brought inside. But uh, again, I'm not going to speak to the the specific um, business operation plans of the Beausoleils at this point. Okay, but so my understand my understanding of the operation now in South Woodstock is that there is a lot of stuff outside displayed, um, including a truck, including things that would be too large to be in the house. Etc. So I feel I feel as if, if that's if, if there is that that's a very again going to introduce a very different element um, to the site from what's there or from what's uh, present at any sort of existing business. Um, the other question I have is just around lighting, and so I, I, I heard the question about the uh, the sign, but what about the parking lot and you know uh, seasons when it gets dark uh, during you know normal business hours? How will that work? Uh, there's not proposed any any lighting. The the latest their shop will be open um, is uh, I believe five o'clock. So only at very rare points in the year will you have uh, darkness hitting um, prior to the close of the shop. Um, and the existing um, lighting from the from the building uh, and the distance to the parking lot is considered adequate at this point. So we so don't know there's going to be no net new lighting on the site except for possibly the sign. The sign is not proposed to be lit. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I mean, I just have one other question because I know other people do want to ask questions oh. as well, which is yeah. just um, with regard to the parking and how it will, what 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 it's going to look like from Child Hill or from some somebody standing on the common. Do you have a rendering of that? I saw the photograph you took. But it looked to me, it looks from your site plan as if that, that parking is going to extend almost to Child Hill Road itself. And, and it also appears as if it's completely unscreened. Can you speak to that? As to what the parking will look like from Child Hill Road. Yeah, well, what would be the visual? We have not prepared a rendering of the, of the future condition parking, parking from Child Hill Road. And is there, is there any fencing or any screening planned, whether it be a, you know, a physical fence or landscaping? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Pete, but I don't believe we've, we've proposed any new, any new landscaping. There is a substantial amount of vegetated cover there, as you can see in the picture behind John here. Um, but yeah, no new landscaping or screening proposed. Okay, so what, 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 just what I'm taking away from where I would live or, uh, or from somebody on the common, the parking is going to be very, very prominent. That's my comments. Thank you. Is there anything else, David? No, thank you. All right. Um, I saw Patrick Mule, um had said he would, um, has, can't raise his hand, but would like to speak. So, Patrick? Yes, thank you. Sorry for uh, speaking in opposition a little too early there, Gail. Um, so, if you can, you bring back up the uh, the picture of the uh, proposed plan. Can you see that? Uh, not yet. All right. So, as I started to say before, um, the Again, I'm at 42 Child Hill Road, uh, right across from the Stones. Um, so I do like to see that, you know, like I started to say before, that not as many trees are gonna be taken out, but I still think that even without taking out a lot of trees, the parking lot is gonna be very much so of an eyesore, especially of that size. Um, one of the last things that you covered was about the concrete apron right outside the barn. Um, that is going to, I don't even know if that barn has a uh, basement crawl space to it, but it's going to be a field stone foundation. So excavating that out um, next to that barn raises the uh, structural integrity question, but also what Gail had mentioned on before was the archeological value of the neighborhood. Um, a lot of relics are found right outside of barns anytime anybody does any digging. 
Um, just an observation, because as we all live in town, the, the Rusty Relic, I've never been to the other location, only the one in town. I've never seen 30 cars parked in their parking lot. So I think that this is a vast overestimation of the amount of parking uh, that is needed. And that amount of parking right next to the road, and I believe uh, Mr. Bishop touched on it, how that parking is gonna be right on the line where the current uh, driveway is, is gonna be a very open area, quite an eyesore from the common, quite an eyesore from the Stones uh, house. Um, I, I just don't see that amount of parking uh, as really necessary. And I also don't understand why a second driveway is necessary just for residential use. Um, if they're gonna be living there and working there, I don't understand why it's necessary uh, for a second entrance there. Um, I would think that those spaces, if this were to go through, um, that those spaces that are marked right now for uh, grass uh, parking, I think that that would be more than enough right there by itself without all this uh, crushed stone area um, that, you know, 10 spots is absolutely plenty. Um, outside of the district, you can see a business that is extremely busy down at the Woodstock Creamery. And they have five spots dedicated to customers. And it's never re really needed to go uh, beyond that. Um, again, I, don't, I yield to anybody else that has seen the uh, current Rusty Relic much busier, but I think everybody's touching on the parking. I think it's a vast overestimation. I don't know how busy they are. I haven't seen that many people needing parking there. Um, yeah, if you could comment on that, if they gave any uh, estimations of the, amount of the amount of customers that they have, I'd like to hear it. All right. Um, so let's see. And next, is there anybody else who wishes to comment? Hello, uh, this is Daniel Forrest. I live at 36 Old Hall Road, also within the historic district. Um, I wanna echo my neighbor's uh, comments that the parking appears to be excessive in relation to the existing size of the building and what we are to understand is the retail space that would actually use, be used by customers. The introduction of parking of this scale on this small, relatively small lot, the public piece of this lot that is visible uh, from the public rights of way uh, is going to be a substantial change in character. Uh, there's gonna be a loss of the existing landscape and lawn areas that is going to change the setting for not just this property, uh, but the abutting properties within the district. I also wanna comment uh, briefly on the considerations for the Historic District Commission for the handicap ramp that is proposed. I would strongly urge that if the commission goes forward in these considerations that that ramp be constructed as an independent structure with no concrete actually poured against um, or in contact with the existing masonry of that building. It's a standard historic practice and part of the Secretary of Interior's standards to um, provide reversibility wherever feasible. Uh, when planning alterations to historic buildings. And I would, uh, I would certainly encourage the um, owners and propo proponents for this to consider uh, reversibility and the idea that that ramp might actually be removed and the house restored to its more of its original appearance. Um, measures like that are relatively simple and shouldn't significantly impede uh, the use of the ramp if it's, um, if it's necessary. Uh, I would also, you know, circling back briefly to the parking, I, I really feel that the district commission would be better served by getting a strong justification from the proponent for why uh, this scale of parking is necessary. I realize this comment is redundant, but I think we're all responding to what seems to be um, far, far in excess of what 
uh, it seems irrational foot traffic might be for a business of this scale and operation. And uh, it also seems relevant to request what the actual rated capacity for the retail space that is here uh, that might set a reasonable limit on the number of parking spaces uh, that would be utilized. If the number of parking spaces is reduced, I think as, as David has suggested, that parking might reasonably be moved uh, more to the rear of the property where it is less prominent and less visible, uh, not just to the neighbors, but to all the other people who visit the district. Lastly, I wanna comment on the archeological sensitivity. I've been a professional archeologist for 28 years. This area is one of the earliest cores of English settlement in, in Woodstock. And certainly excavations, removal of stone masonry, uh, even the rain garden itself is all potentially impinging on areas that may yield artifacts that are important to our understanding of the initial settlement of Woodstock and the early historic development of the hill itself. Thank you, Dan. Um, let's see, anyone else uh, wish, to com wish to comment? Yeah, I have uh, one more with their hand raised. Yes. Uh, this, is, this is Tom Chase. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Tom. Good. Uh, I, I believe that the, the change of uh, 599 Route 169 from residential use to mixed residential and commercial will uh, adversely affect the character of the northern corner of the Woodstock Historic District. I first drove down here from New Hampshire uh, by Route 169 in the summer of 1961, came around the curve just before Old Hall Road, the panorama of Woodstock Commons opened to my view. There was no distraction of a store or signage on the left. A little further on, Roseland Cottage came into sight, and I remember thinking what a beautiful town it, it was, and it still is. Uh, the existing trees and house on the property fit in very well with the historic district. From the photos supplied by the applicant, it looks as if the transformation, the transformed commercial property will not. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, well, it's, my, my views are obvious. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, do we have anyone else wishing to comment? Gail, I'm rudely going to unmute. I don't think my hand is being recognized. Okay. Jean Thank McLeod you. here. Thank you, Jean. Go ahead. Um, this is Jean McClellan. I live at 582 Route 169, diagonally opposite from the house in question. Um, I um, have a couple of questions first and then some comments as well. Um, I, I know in the, I'm confused, um, in the application for a special permit to planning and zoning, the applicant states site parking, lighting, and building access to be improved but no exterior structural expansion of building is proposed. So lighting, they specifically mentioned lighting to planning and zoning, and yet they're saying tonight that there will be, so I'm quite confused here. That's part of the special permit application. Um, all right, let's see. Um, would the representative of the applicant like to comment? Sure, this is John Guskowski. Uh, in the time between our application to the Planning and Zoning Commission a couple of months ago and our application to Historic District a couple of weeks ago, uh, the applicants have uh, opted to not add any additional lighting. And that will okay. be made clear if it's ever scheduled for a public hearing with Planning and Zoning. Thank you. Okay. Um, another question, um, parking is clearly on everybody's mind, I think. Um, how wide will the apron onto Child Hill Road B in the drawings. We're proposing a, a standard 24 foot wide drive there uh, in the apron. Is, has, that the, uh, is that the drive itself or is that the apron as it enters onto Child Hill Road? So that's the drive itself at its widest point. The apron will be, give me a moment here. 
54 feet wide at its widest point. And I, I missed the number. Five, so four? It, five, four, 54 feet at its widest point, 24 feet at its narrowest. Whoa, that's, that's a wide apron. Um, the, um, and the distance from road edge to the beginning of the parking lot, how far will that be? So we are a minimum of 33 feet from the edge of Cal Hill Road to the parking lot. Okay. Um, okay. I have one additional fact to add. Um, the chair has mentioned that this uh, property is not only in the local historic district, it is also on uh, a contributing structure in the National Register District. Um, it's um, on a scenic, uh, state scenic road, state scenic byway, but it is also, and this is not mentioned, at least in the um, application to planning and zoning, it is also a national scenic byway. It is one of only two national scenic byways in the state, the other being the Merritt Turnpike, or Merritt Parkway, I guess it is. Um, so I think that also needs to be added in terms of historic significance. Um, I am glad with Pat Millet that um, there aren't going to be many trees removed. Uh, there is one that's clearly dead and needs to be removed. Um, but I am not at all sanguine that the remaining trees will do well, especially the ones nearest the church um, that are on church property. Um, I, we have a lot of experience here with um, trees near roadways and um, all the maples along Route 169, for example, have gone. Um, and um, parking and, uh, is tough on, on trees and roots and I wouldn't expect all the trees to survive. I have a question about the ramp and also uh, well, I have a question first about the hedge, existing hedge, two hedges. There's one that surrounds existing parking, which may be for, I don't know, somewhere five or six spaces, I would estimate, at the back of the house. And there's a, a well-established evergreen hedge around that. Is that hedge going to remain? Hello? The, the hedge at the, the handicapped spots may need to be trimmed, but it is not intended to be removed. Okay. Um, and how about the hedge that goes from the barn forward on the property? From the barn out to Route 169, there's no plans to alter that in any way. Okay. I guess I have a question. The ramp, as it's designed, is in... You know, arguably, after you remove some of the overgrowth, as you describe it, um, a very conspicuous and prominent corner of a very prominent building in the historic district. It, would it be conceivable, I remember using that back entrance at what used to be the Chase's house. They used to sell eggs and we went there regularly. And, um, the back entrance that's near the existing parking hedge um, could make a very nice entrance to a shop, could it not, with much shorter, allowing parking to be kept back if the parking were limited and um, handicapped access from the back of the building. I gather that's not in the current plans, but I would invite the um, applicant to think about the nature of what they're doing in changing the character of the historic district. Um, I have a comment about the design for the driveway going out to 169 that would remain but have a sign on it that said no exit residential use only. Um, I'm afraid I don't have 
a lot of confidence in that kind of sign. Um, and I also feel that that dangerous corner, we have seen multiple accidents at just exactly that spot, um, would be a very difficult thing for commercial traffic, difficult for residences. And I'm sure the back driveway has been used more than that front driveway. Um, I, um, I guess I, I have a number of reservations. There are clearly things that have not been spelled out. Um, I wonder about the spindles for the ramp. Um, you say that they will be matched to the existing spindles. Do the existing spindles meet code, for example? And would that necessitate a change? We don't have um, detailed description of that kind of um, that kind of thing. Um, I think concrete for the ramp is not in character with the district um, at all. I think the whole ramp location is not in, in keeping. But the major thing is that parking. A sea of cars facing Child Hill Road, facing the historic common, right in the face of all the neighbors. Um, that's not what the historic district has set its precedent for. Um, in the past, and I'm, I guess I'm speaking as someone who has been a prior member of the historic district and who helped get it established. Um, we have requested that parking be set well back from a roadway, protected, and the view of parking be protected um, from the roadway or public way, and the common would be considered a public way as well. Um, and so it's really what's been done before that met those criteria has gone through. Another instance which put parking right out to a, a roadway was turned down. In my time on the historic district, it was the only thing that was turned down flat. The commission tried to work with people in modifying things in many ways, and I think has a long reputation of doing that. But this uh, goes against two very important precedents that have been set by the Historic District Commission, and it is an affront to the character of the Historic District um, itself. And I guess I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Any any additional uh, any additional comments? I had uh, another additional comment to beat the head the to beat the dead horse a little more. Yes, um, Patrick. To think of a commercial property that we already have on the hill with the uh, with um, Woodstock Orchards, they don't even have half as much parking as what is proposed here, and we all see the volume of uh, of customers that they have. Um, I'm not necessarily against the use of this as a shop. Um, I'm against the, obviously, the parking and how they are looking at changing the property forever. Um, I think a shop within the district isn't necessarily a negative thing. I just think that the, all the changing to it that they're doing, uh, again, won't, won't meet the district's needs. This is the chair. I just want to point out that we are not, um, let's see, we are not reviewing whether or not it's appropriate for this to, at this point, to be a retail business. That's, um, but it's all about the, um, the changes being made to the property. Thank you, Pat. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to comment? Jock, I see your hand. Hi, I'm Jock McClellan. I'm fortunate to live with Jean McClellan at 582 Route 169. And um, I'd like to make a couple of points. First, I wonder if John Kukowski could tell me whether there has been any discussion at all 
of a commercial use of the parking area. Everyone has commented how the parking seems excessive, and I'm trying to figure out why. One possible explanation is that the academy might want some extra parking. Has there been any discussion of that, John? No. Do you have any sense, John, of why such a large parking area is being proposed for such a shop? Uh, I suppose uh, large is a matter of opinion, but it was based on the um, input from the owners on their volume uh, at their current retail shops. John, do they have any plans for the use of the field below the barn? I've not been uh, given any information to that effect. All right. As uh, I, I will just add my voice to everyone else's that it seems to me the parking is excessive. And I think the suggestions that doing it uh, towards the back uh, with maybe five places would certainly be sufficient. Um, I'd like to make a more general point, if I can. The purpose of the historic district is to protect what is really one of the beautiful villages in Southern New England. And we, Jean and I have seen towns like Belchertown and Brimfield and Sturbridge gradually change. And what happens is that one change happens and then that changes the economic incentives for nearby properties to do the same. And I think the same thing would be at, uh, at play here, that if the kind of shop that um, is being proposed is there, we could well find that mm -hmm. other properties nearby will have to give way to no longer being residential properties, but instead becoming Brinfield properties. And I think that would be sad for the town. Um, every decision the historic district makes uh, can have long-term implications. Not all of them do, but I think this is one that does have long-term implications. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to make a comment at this time? You, I, since I'm not, I'm not seeing any hand, well, let's see. Anthony would know if there's hands raised. Um, mm, there's none right now. Okay. Um, then at this point, the commissioners have an opportunity to ask any questions of those who have spoken in opposition. No questions. No questions here. None from me. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, all right, and the applicant's representative can um, comment, make a make any comments he wish in um, response to the opposition comments. Uh, we'd be happy to share your concerns with the uh, applicant uh, on the on the property. Okay, thank you, John. Um, I have uh, I have one comment to make. So, in addition, about the well, two really about the property. Um, we should all be reminded that um, that house has been on the hill since 1805. Um, there is. I'm going to see if I can't share. I don't know if I can share it. It's not coming up. Sorry, folks. Looks like it's there. It is. This is the historic photograph that was in Journey Through Woodstock, the Woodstock Historical Society's book. It can be found on page 18, I believe. No, 13. Um, this is the Amos Payne House. Uh, the photograph was taken in 1898. Um, but this, this, this house has always been a residence. 
as well as a farm. Um, it it was a was a doctor's office, but that was in the early days. Um, it has maintained its pastoral aspect, anchoring the north portion of the common of the of the common since it was first um, first constructed, and now anchoring serving as one of the anchor points of the his, of the hill itself. Um, it was a property. It's a property that is used to def help define the residential character of the district. And since it is the mission of the Historic District Commission to maintain that those character defining features, we need to take its its use and its position in the um, in, as part of the district in our deliberations. Um, is does there? Let's see. Is there anyone who wishes to add any further comments in opposition to the application? If not, commission members, then um, do you have any further comp questions for the applicant? That's the upstairs going to be used for. Uh, I mean, sorry. All right. Um, are you comfortable? Then we have. We can either close the bring the public hearing to a close and and um, take up our deliberation, or we can, if we just need to, if we need additional information. Um, we can continue the public hearing. Using any other part Are we ready to close the public hearing and make a deliberation? Um, Mr. Guskowski? Just a quick question procedurally. Um, obviously, uh, per, your, per your guidance, we will need uh, separate uh, hearings to cover the walkway the dumpster pad, uh, the, and the removal of the well house, as well as the um, the concrete pad in front of the barn, would it be appropriate to continue this um, and 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 open the other hearing to include that, so that everything be considered together, as well as any changes that the applicant may wish to make, particularly to parking, for instance, at the next hearing, or do no. we need to have a, a whole new process? No, what we need to do is just we need to take care of this particular application Very and well. then start a new process. All right, um, then I am looking for a motion from one of the commission members to close the public hearing. I'll so move. I'll second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, the decision was unanimous. Uh, the public hearing is drawn to a close. So what will happen next is that um, the commission members will uh, discuss this and uh, reach a decision. So there won't be any opportunities for, we will not ask any additional questions of the applicant, nor will there be um, any opportunity for public comment at this time. So. You should all be muted except for Stan Swanson, Harold Bishop, and Tim Monahan. All right. And does anyone, any of the three gentlemen, do you wish to make any comments? Yeah, sure. Stan, go ahead. Um, Particularly the handicap ramp, and particularly that it's concrete, and also the parking area, proximity to the street and the size of it, and also given the historic nature of the history of the house and the national roadway and the whole thing, I would be opposed to um, granting permission for the ramp and parking lot to sign. We're going to, well, the application is, will be denied or approved. I would say denied. I'll second that. 
Are we voting or is this discussion? No, this is discussion. Okay. But Harold was, I think Harold was just expressing that he, he agreed. Right. My, my take is this, I mean, my main concern is the preservation of the house and the barn. And it looks like this plan does that. I mean, I think there are big drawbacks with the views that are going to develop with the increased parking and the 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 ramp, the handicap ramp. But I think, you know, as this plan as it stands is not very good, but it could be modified to be workable for the district. That's my take. Thank you. Um, you know, it's our main our main um, charge is to is to um, protect uh, the character defining features of the district and that includes the viewscapes um, that includes the very pastoral nature of a significant part of the district that includes um, the common which is again part of on um, the national register um, and so we need to take into account the impact that parking of that size would uh, um, would have on the view there there are four those are there are four anchor buildings in that corner there is the gold ghouls house there is this this house um, there's the mcclellan house and one could say there's also the academy um, as well. Um, those define that entire North, North Hill section, North Common section. Uh, and so our, our concern should be beyond just buildings. It has to be also um, the, very, the very nature of those spaces. I'm aware of that. Um, you know, there is parking in the historic district. There's a church next door that has a large parking lot. The school has a large parking lot. The church has parking. The orchard has parking. Um, those are all within the viewscape of the historic district. And a lot of it's in the viewscape of the historic byway. So, I mean, I don't think it's just parking itself. Parking can be done where the impact is mitigated. You know, Correct. I think we all agree that this parking is way overboard and it's not justified. But as Jean mentioned, maybe if the parking was placed more in the back, you know, it would not have much of an impact on, you know, the neighbors and the historic district. I think you make valid points, a valid point that, that um, this plan doesn't it really doesn't seem to have taken into account the, the character defining features of the district and the importance of maintaining those. It doesn't appear that a lot of um, effort was taken into assisting, into trying to maintain that. Um, and there are, uh, and with the, the existing parking that the, at the, I should point out that the buildings that all have parking within the district were all, all existed um, prior to the district's formation, and their parking for the most existed and was taken into account in the formation of the district. Um, so there's that. But um, it seems that we're in agreement that the plans as presented really are not appropriate for the, the historic district. And therefore... Right, we're just, we're just yeah. ruling on the plan that they're presenting and there's nothing the plan to stop is, is them from modifying right. it and coming back. Right. right. So that they 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 can if and realist so if, if we if we deny the application as presented, then um, really then the next step is for the applicants to ideally what the process they should take would be to come to us during the pro that what that great project consultation phase that we've added to our agenda that allows applicants to come in and talk over proposals and work so that we can work with the applicant to arrive at a, a mutually 
agreeable, beneficial resolution for a project um, and help them understand how to um, come up with a plan that satisfies the needs of the historic district. So in this case, what it would be advised that the applicant do that and then come, come back with, um, if they're still interested, come back with a, an improved plan. Right. there any additional comments gentlemen no i think uh what you just said will cover that that they can come back with another proposal mm -hmm. right. um and i think if we deny this we have to be specific about what you know concerns us what could be changed that might you know well, muster right. approval. what we do what we and, and because the um, two representatives, at least two representatives of the applicant are are hearing this, um, then uh, one is hopeful that they will take back to the applicant um, our desire to work with the applicant to see if we can come up with a proposal that satisfies the requirements of the district. And I think it would be good to have the actual applicant present. I agree. It would be very helpful, as well as as a um, some additional information that is um, that that is missing, and also so that the next application can include all the proposed changes that are part of this project, rather than just a few of the pe of the pieces of the puzzle. That's my background. Um, are we ready to um, to to have a um, a motion? Sure. All right. Then I will take a yes. motion from. I'll take a motion from one of you. I'll move that we deny the application as proposed. All right. Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there discussion? All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. There was no abstentions, no objections. Then the motion to deny the application has, is, has passed. So Mr. Guskowski, um, yes, yes, what we will do is, um, I hope you'll convey to the applicant um, the, our wishes to work with them to be able to, um, to, to hopefully to improve their proposal um, so that it will, you know, um, so that it will come to a good resolution. Um, we, our next meeting um, is the, we meet on the fourth Wednesday of each month. Um, I will mentioned that we are able to do special meetings. Um, we do need at least two weeks notice, but we can hold special meetings if that's necessary. What I strongly, strongly recommend is that the applicant, as well as, as you and perhaps Mr. Parent, come for the project consultation phase or just request a special meeting that's merely a project consultation to be able to really talk at length about the project so that um, every you you and your applicants really understand um, the nature of the district and we understand what it is you're trying to accomplish and we work together for the best resolution that's precisely what i shall convey to our clients good thank you very much all right and we're not done um, we have a second public hearing. Um, we are holding a public hearing on July 22nd at 6.30 p.m., which was quite a while ago. This time for 543 Route 169 for roof replacement. Mr. Simakowski, it's your turn at last. May I unmute? <laughs> Great. Thanks. I'm John Simakowski. I'm a uh, senior trustee with the First Congregational Church of Woodstock. 
And uh, this particular first part of the proposal is a continuation of some roofing work at the church. Last year I came before you, I believe um, it might have been the end of July as well, for a uh, proposal where we had re-roofed the sanctuary roof of the church with uh, changing from three tab shingles to architectural shingles. We'd like to do the exact same thing on remaining sections of the roof. And we understand that parts of that roof are visible from the road, namely Cemetery Road, where you can see the roof over the office and part of Harrison Hall, the Great Room Hall in the back. And if you look on the Roxbury Road side, uh, you can also see the library roof. And there are three shed pitched roofs that are in the rear of the church that have three tab shingles that are over 30 years old. And I believe the shingles that were put on in 1990 were 25 year warranty shingles. So we're on borrowed time. And uh, with available monies, we'd like to uh, proceed with replacing the shingles in the back roof sections of the church before we have leaks. Um, we, we had a roofer out there who, who did the work for us last summer. And we've discovered that shingles are falling off in the back. We can see nails exposed. And in certain sections, you can actually pick it up where the adhesive is no longer holding the shingles down. And so we're fearful that in the interest of preserving that building, we darn well better replace the roof sooner than later. So basically, you're just, it'll be the same shingle, shingles that we approved for previous roof sections. Yes. And everything else will, will remain, you're just replacing in kind. Yes. And they're GAF, they're the same color as the ones from last time, and they're the architectural GAF shingles. I think uh, we use charcoal to replicate the color of the sanctuary roof, original three tab shingles. Uh, commission members, any questions? No questions. Tim, anything? Yeah, I'm not sure this needs uh, our approval. Did you hear me? Yes. I did. <laughs> okay. If you're replacing kind, then you don't need this well, commission's ap approval. We, we currently have three tab shingles on the roof, replacing yeah. the architectural shingles. Okay. Do you have so a copy? I'll discuss last summer. Right. Uh, so that precedent from last summer for the sanctuary roof would carry through to this, would be my opinion. Um, let's see, it appears. All right, then um, if there are no other questions, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. I'll move. I'll Everything just broke up. Okay. Can you take the part of us? You're breaking up, Gail. I can't tell what you're saying. <laughs> Dear. Your uh, image is freezing too. Is it? Uh oh. It shouldn't be. Hold on. Give me a moment. It's working now, but. Oh, great. Great. As I'm plugged in, so there shouldn't be a. It shouldn't go bad, badly. Um, all right, then um, I'll take a, um, let's see, motion, let's see. Stan, did you, you gave, made a motion to close the public hearing. Tim, do you second? I second. All right, um, there's no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, all right, public hearing is closed. Any discussion on the um, roof? Four five forty three one sixty nine. Is Jane wanting to? No, I think she's leaving. 
Oh, okay. Or she's blocking uh, herself. Discussion? I, it's a no-brainer to me. <laughs> All right. Then I'll take a motion to um, approve the application as presented. So moved. Dan, you're going to have a second. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, motion carried. And so, Mr. Simakowski, that is, that's been approved. Thank you. And now the next public hearing today at 6.30 is for 539, known as the Parsonage, Route 169, and this is for porch repair. Yes, the, uh, the side porch access off Roxbury Road uh, has a railing that's in bad disrepair and it really can't be repaired and it really needs to be replaced. It is rotted and uh, actually the construction's a little weak so that even if you try to replace parts of the railing, it still needs to be, it's not structurally sound. So the plan is to remove the railing, replace it with pressure treated railing and two by two pressure treated spindles up in accordance with the Connecticut Building Code. Because I also believe that the, uh, the railings going down the stairways are, are just, um, I think they're just uh, sections of five quarter pressure treated wood that are at an angle that are separated a couple feet apart. And so that's probably not even up to code in, its, in itself. The actual deck of the of um, the, the deck where the railing goes up to the uh, entrance of the house is actually pressure treated. So it had been replaced some years ago. So what we're trying to do is as close to as in kind as possible, replace it with pressure treated material. We'll let it cure and age, and then we'll just paint or stain it white to match the color of the house and the former railing. So this is the chair. So what, what um, which pieces will actually be either a change in material or a change in design? Um, I, th I think, um, and I can, I, can, I can probably see if I can find a picture of it, if that would help you. Now? Yeah. Okay. You know, John's wife, image like, just froze. I sent my wife over to uh, Roxbury, <laughs> over to the parsonage to take a picture of it for me. So bear with me, I'm gonna try to pull it up. That's not the one. Okay, so how do I share this? Okay, there's a, at the bottom of your screen, if you head your cursor toward the bottom, there should be a little green in the middle. There should be something that says share screen. Desktop. It says open system preferences. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna hit share and see what happens. Nothing. Come here. Okay. Well, how about uh, the spindles on it? Are the spindles going to be the same configuration, or are they going to be different? Um. They're going to be in accordance with the building code, which might be a little bit closer than the original spindles that are there. And I think the spindles that were there were, um, were, were I think, turned pine and probably something that did not appear to be period based on the age of that house. Uh, I think they were something that was done, that were done years later, and they're just rotted out. That's okay. That, so currently the spindles are turned. Yes. All right. So are the new spindles that you're putting in, even though they're going, they're going to be made of a different material, they're going to be pressure treat. Will they also be turned? I think we were just using two by two. Two by so, two. two the, this, all right. The, so that's considered a change. And is there anything else that will be, you, you're going to change the, you said the decking was pressure treat, so you're going to just replace some of that? Uh, the deck will remain. We're not okay. going to change the deck at all. We're just doing the railing, strictly the railing and the handrail going up the steps. 
and the shape of the handrails currently is what? The, uh, the shape for the handrails, the, the, the railing going up, uh, it, it's, it's a typical rail cap, which is probably about three and a half to four inches wide with spindles underneath it. We'll replicate the same type of thing if we can. Um, the difference which one would see from the road would be the, and I, and I it's, it's hard to describe, but basically what someone had done was the newel post at the base and the post at the top of the deck landing just has what, what appears to be something like five quarter by six inch pressure treated, two boards going diagonally that are parallel to the, to the slope of the stairs going to the newel post down below and the top post up above. We're gonna replace that with spindles because it really doesn't meet code. And it's really not structurally sound. And what about the newel posts? Same. They're, they're going to be replaced? They're pressure treated. So I and think they'll, they'll probably remain. Okay. So it's basically the railing and replacing the railing structure. I think at the top, the, the top where the landing is, the, the posts wobble. And we're going we're gonna to have to probably replace the pressure treated posts that were put in incorrectly and make them more structurally sound. And when everything cures and ages enough, it'll be, re it'll be painted white to match what was originally the color there, which is white. Um, commission members, do you have questions for John? I do not. No, Tim. Harold, nothing. Stan, nothing. Okay, so the only the change is going to be the only configuration change is going to be that you'll no longer be having turned. Right. The big change is no longer turned spindles. Correct. And you'll actually see spindles going up the stairs instead of two planks. Two planks. Right. And you're adding spindles to the lower the that that lower the stair yeah. section. Yes. Okay. No, no one has any further questions? No. no. All right. Um, motion to close the public hearing. Or is there, I guess I should ask, is there any comment from, I still see one member of the public still <laughs> hanging in there with us. Is there any, any comment from the public? Guess not. All right. Motion to close the public hearing. I'll move it. Is there second. a second? All right. Thank you, Harold. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carried. Public hearing closed. Okay, so sit tight, John. We're going to figure out what we're going to do. Okay. Um, and uh, gentlemen, comments? This, this is still really breaking up for me, so. Okay. I, I have no question about it. Right. Harold or Tim? I mean, ideally, it would be good to have a, a sketch of what's going to happen, but I mean, it sounds reasonable. Yeah. I, under ideal circumstances, the, um, the turn spindles would be replaced with turn spindles. That would be what is preferred. Um, pressure treat is not something that's easy to turn. Um, right. In which case you would end up, if you're replacing with turn spindles, you would make it out of some other wood that's a little more weather resistant. Um, it's a small, What are our thoughts on that? Your audio was so broken up, Gail, that I didn't get what you said. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know if it's me or you or the lines in between us or what. But. 
right now. I he's hear her fine. Straight. I think it might be you, yeah. Stan. All right, maybe I should. It was working good minutes ago. I could move it to a different room, maybe. Yep. What do we think about the? I'll try that. Okay, the spindles, gentlemen. I mean, if you can make them the way they propose, that's great. But as you say, it could be difficult. But as long as they use natural wood, um, I'm okay. That would be my feeling. You mean not use pressure treat on the spindles, but use something else that can be turned? Well, I think their plan is to use pressure treated. Right. As you say, that can be very difficult. I mean, if they can do that, I'm okay with it. But it seems like that may not be possible. So another wood such as hickory, I think, is a long lasting wood. Stan may know better, but that would also be okay. Well, you're going to be limited in and species because of the supply chain and those kind of things aren't made in hickory or any woods like that for exterior use yeah i hmm. it's it, i i think it's it's difficult because we don't have a picture or a drawing of any sort to assist us with or even in really locating this particular porch um, am I hearing that maybe we're not able to, we're not able to approve the application and that it needs to, we need more information? Well, maybe we should have a picture. I, I, I have to say that I looked at the porch myself and I don't remember if the balusters were turned or not if they're turned that's available and pressure treated and we could vote to go that way in a future meeting did i come through yeah okay um well what are we what are we thinking on this Maybe we yeah. gotta put it off a month the options are we can continue it if uh, we can uh, being consistent we can deny it and then they can come back for a second with a second application yeah. after some conversation to try and figure out a good solution and with photographs so that we can better see or what? if it's just a just a matter of getting photographs and seeing seeing this or going there to look at it, then we can continue it and then. Can I text you a copy of this picture or email it to you? Now? Right now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, email, let's see, yes. If you, if you send it to my through 18 eyes email, 18 eyes. Now, what email do you have for me that you've used? Bill Usher at historicdistrict.org. Historicnewengland.org. Um, G Usher at historicnewengland.org. Okay, go ahead because that's the computer I happen to be using. So, and I'm, I can get online to get that. I just sent it. All right. Bear with me, people. Bear with me. <laughs> so I sent it from the photograph that was taken tonight. Okay. And I have to tell you that whatever we do will be a dramatic improvement to the picture you're going to look at of that railing and the stair rail going up the stairs. So I've got it. The question is, can I share it? 
Are you able to open it? Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I can see it. There. Can everybody see it? Yes. Can you enlarge it? Uh, full screen. All right. So, um, all right. Thank you, John. That's a big help. So is the, is all this trellis piece, yes. that's going to, is that going to stay? Yes. The only, the only thing we're dealing with is the railing up at the top. Yes. The railing going to the house that you really can't see because you're looking straight on. Yeah. railing going down those stairs. And the problem is the railing going down the stairs is not to code. So that would have to be all spindled. And then the railing up along the top, we're replacing that. The, the plan is to replace it with two by two pressure treated, which is readily available. Right. And pour up that post at the top and the post on the other corner, which are weak. The way, they're, uh, the, the way they were structurally connected to the framing down below makes them, you can actually shake them and, and that's right. not okay. So as I'm looking at it, it appears to me that the only real change in configuration is going to be, you're going to add yeah. um, spindles down. up on this side right here. Yes. On the outer side mm -hmm. of the stairs. Yes. And then, like you said, this, these spindles, you're proposing to just make them two by twos rather than turn spindles. Yes. Okay. I do believe that a very similar turn baluster is available and pressure treated. So we could consider that. Okay. Okay. Has everybody seen it sufficiently? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's see if I can manage to get out of here. Okay. And back to us. All right. Um, so based on that, it would seem that, um, and based on Stan's statement, it would seem that it's very possible that we could approve the application with the stipulation that the spindles be pressure treat, I mean, be um, turned. If available, yeah. Yeah, well, and if, they're, if we yeah. put that stipulation in, I mean, that depends, we have to, we have to decide really what If that's important and to be um, consistent, it it is. Um, it would be preferable to use those. So the options are deny it, have John go out and look and see if he can find those, come back, and then the only um, then the application is merely one of changing the composition of the wood and adding the extra spindles to the low, to the stair section. And I think for consistency in the way we are handling the applications, that very likely might be what we have to do. I got lost there. Or... Well, um, we have to make sure that we um, are treating all applications consistently. Right. So, I... Uh, oh. Tim, do you have a comment? Kind of move on. Well, we just want, does Tim have a comment? I think I agree with the way you were going there. Okay. All right, then, um, then we would take, then entertain a motion to deny the application as presented. Um, and then that's, that's an end to that. Um, however, 
um, as John has been able to hear our conversation, he knows that really the only issue up is, uh, is the spindles at the moment. So his, for his planning purposes, he can go ahead with everything else and then figure out if he can find those spindles and then come back to us for another, with another application. And as we said before, John, and I think we did for your previous roof, we can, um, we can hold a special meeting. Or, yes. can you approve it with pressure treated turn spindles? And if they turn out not to be available, I have to come back. So, let's see. You're generating and kind of like generating an interrupt and saying that you would like to amend your, your the description of your application to be turned, that, that in your description is, will be a turned pressure treated, then we can go forward with that. Yes. Okay. So the proposal is to repair the decrepit porch um, by replacing the um, rotted pieces with pressure treat um, spindles um, and, and adding spindles to the stair section. Yes. Is that, if that sounds good, then I'll take a motion to approve the application as amended. Uh, the, uh, the application as proposed. I'll make a motion. Right. Is there a second? I'll second. Great, discussion? No. Nope, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thumbs up or thumbs down, Harold? <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> that makes it easier. Uh, all right, then um, the application is approved as presented. Thank you. Thank you. And I. And that brings our. Ad. Hold on, almost lost this. Um, that's a public hearing to a close. Um, let's see if we can't. I, I, due to the lateness of the hour, um, the, the next items on our agenda are review of minutes, correspondence, pu public comment, consultations, which at the moment we have none, and old business, new business, and adjourn. Um, we have nothing pressing. If everybody is in agreement, we can table the remainder of the agenda items. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, okay. I agree. <laughs> All right, so I mean, I, I, I'll entertain a motion to table the remainder of the agenda items. I, I take that that was a Tim. Yes. yes. And then Stan seconded. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Here. Carol's got the thumb, so that's good. <laughs> Very good. Then um, motion to adjourn. I'll move. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Need your thumb, Harold. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor. Uh,